Hi friends! Today we are going to discuss the types of electric circuits. Have you ever wondered what is present inside your computer, cell phone, or any other electronic device? Well, all these systems are made up of a circuit. Do you know what an electrical circuit is? An electric circuit is a pathway through which an electric current flows. A circuit pathway is usually conducting wire. And let us first discuss the simple electric circuit. A simple electric circuit consists of a battery, conducting wires, and an electrical device to operate on. Here we have a light bulb as an electrical device. An electrical device converts electricity into other forms of energy. For example, the light bulb converts electricity into light and heat energy. A battery is a source of electricity. The wire is made up of a conducting material which allows an electric current to pass through it. For example, copper wire. The function of a switch is to start or stop the flow of electrons. When the switch is closed or on, the circuit is complete. When the switch is closed or on, the circuit is complete and the current starts flowing through the closed circuit. That's a closed circuit is a circuit with no gaps in it. The circuit connected to a dead battery may not perform any work, but is still considered as a closed circuit. Whereas when the switch is off, or if a wire is broken, the circuit is incomplete. The current cannot flow through an open circuit. The current only flows when the circuit is closed. When the current flows, the electric bulb starts glowing. There are two types of electric circuits, series circuits, and parallel circuits. Let us first learn about series circuits. A series circuit is a closed circuit in which the current flows along one path. In a series circuit, all the electrical components are connected end to end using the connections in series. Series circuits get their name because the devices along the circuit are connected in series. All the electronic components are connected in such a way that there is only one pathway for the current to flow through. The pathway forms a complete closed loop from the battery through one of the connecting wires to the electronic device and then back to the power through another conducting wire. Here we have two light bulbs connected in series. Here we have three light bulbs connected in series. If the light bulbs are connected in series, the brightness of each individual bulb reduces upon adding more bulbs. In a series circuit, the same current flows through all the electrical components, regardless of what components are used. A series circuit is complete when every component functions properly. If one of the components fails, all the other electronic components will stop working. That means the entire circuit will not work. A series circuit looks like a necklace with all the beads strung onto one string. Here we have an interesting example. Do you put on Christmas lights on the trees at home during Christmas? Well, Christmas lights are connected in series. If one light stops working, the rest of the lights should go out. Now, let us discuss some advantages and disadvantages of a series circuit. The same current flows through all the components of a series circuit, so each electrical device lights up with the same brightness. All circuit components can be operated by a single switch. A lower number of connecting wires are required. Series circuits do not overheat easily. This is one of the main reasons that series circuits are used in Christmas lights. Series circuits are easy to make. So, these are the advantages. Now let's learn about the disadvantages. If one component fails, the circuit becomes incomplete. Therefore, the current cannot flow through the circuit, and as a result, none of the components work. Cells connected in a series circuit do not last long. In a series circuit, the brightness of the individual bulb gets reduced upon adding more bulbs. So we have learned about the disadvantages and 
Advantages of a series circuit. Can you imagine a place where you only need to use one switch to turn on a lamp, washing machine, oven, vacuum cleaner, television, and even a fan? This would be a place where all the electrical devices are connected in series. And in that case, you can just use one switch to turn everything on. And you would only have to use one switch in order to turn everything off. Now what will be the disadvantage of this series circuit? Here is one of the disadvantages. If the lamp gets damaged, nothing will work. Neither your fan, nor your machine, nor your vacuum cleaner. Nothing would work. This is why a series circuit is not used for connecting many appliances. They are mostly used for making strings of lights that you use to decorate your Christmas tree, because you need to turn on all the Christmas lights with one switch. Now let's learn another kind of circuit, which is a parallel circuit. Parallel circuit is a closed circuit in which the current flows through two or more branches at the same time and then it recombines via a common path to complete the circuit. Parallel circuits connect devices along branch pathways. This type of circuit provides separate pathways for the current to flow through. Like in the image that you can see, the current has three parallel paths to flow through. Parallel circuits get their name because the devices along the circuit are connected in parallel, and parallel circuits look like ladders. All the electrical devices connected in a parallel circuit are independent of each other. The electric current travels to each bulb separately. The brightness of an individual bulb connected in parallel is independent of each other, so the bulb will not grow dim when another bulb is added. In a parallel circuit, if one bulb breaks or burns out, the other bulbs will remain lit. This is so because a parallel circuit provides at least one other path for the electric current to flow through. Now think of all the tube lights in your home. If one tube light burns out, the other tube lights will still work because they are connected in parallel. Domestic electrical appliances and factory circuits are good examples of parallel circuits. You don't switch on all the appliances of your home using a single switch. All the devices or all the appliances in your home are connected through a parallel circuit. If one device or appliance burns out or goes out, it does not affect the other appliances. Now let's learn some advantages and disadvantages of parallel circuits. In parallel circuits, each component is independent, so if one of the bulbs or one of the units burn out, the other bulbs will continue to glow. Parallel circuits are safe and reliable. Cells connected in parallel last longer. All electrical devices connected in parallel circuits have the same brightness. Now let's learn some of the disadvantages of a parallel circuit. The current flowing through the different electrical appliances connected in parallel is different, and more connecting wires are required to make parallel circuits. Now let's learn the difference between series and parallel circuits again. In a series circuit, there is only one pathway for the current to flow, whereas in a parallel circuit, there are two or more pathways. In a series circuit, the current remains the same throughout the entire circuit, whereas in a parallel circuit, the current divides into different pathways and then recombines. In a series circuit, if one appliance fuses, nothing works. Whereas in the case of a parallel circuit, if one device or appliance fuses, the other devices can still work. In the case of a series circuit, the brightness of an individual bulb decreases upon adding more bulbs to the circuit. Whereas in the case of a parallel circuit, each bulb works independently, so there is no effect on the brightness of each individual bulb upon adding more bulbs. Now we will learn how to draw the schematic circuit diagram. Schematic circuit diagrams are a representation of the components of an electric circuit using symbols rather than realistic pictures. For that, we should first know the symbols of the circuit diagram. This is the symbol of a cell. 
with one positive end and one negative end. And this is the symbol of a battery. And we know the battery is a group of two or more cells. So in the symbol, there are also two or more cells attached. This is the symbol of a connecting wire. Here we have the symbol of a light bulb. And here we have the symbol of an open switch. And this is the symbol of a closed switch. Now let's see how to draw a schematic diagram of a series circuit that has three light bulbs connected to a battery and one open switch. First are the symbol of a battery and then connected to the symbol of a switch. And here we have used the symbol of an open switch. Now connect this symbol of the open switch to the symbol of three light bulbs joined in series because we are making a series circuit. And then end the circuit with the symbol of a battery. So we have made a schematic diagram of a series circuit that has three light bulbs connected to a battery and one open switch and this is a series circuit. Now we will see how to draw a schematic diagram of a parallel circuit that has one open switch and two light bulbs connecting to a cell. Draw a symbol of a cell and then connect to the symbol of an open switch. And then we have to draw the symbol of two bulbs in parallel. You can see how we have drawn a parallel circuit. It seems like a ladder. The bulbs are not connected in series, that is in one loop. For each bulb there is a loop that is complete. Even if a bulb fuses, the other bulbs will glow. Now let's conduct an experiment on the circuit. First we will be making a parallel circuit and conduct an experiment on it. Take a connecting wire, attach one end of the connecting wire to one of the terminals of a battery, and then the other end of the wire to the right side of the bulb. Attach another wire to the other terminal of the battery and connect it to one of the terminals of the switch. Get another connecting wire and connect its one end to the left side of the light bulb and the other end to the terminal end of the switch. We need to add one more bulb. Take one more connecting wire, attach one end of the connecting wire to the right side of the first bulb and the other end to the right side of the second bulb. Attach another wire to the left side of the first bulb and connect it to the left side of the second bulb. And your parallel circuit is ready. Now take out any bulb from the circuit. The rest of the bulbs will keep on glowing regardless of one bulb being removed. Therefore, in the case of a parallel circuit, we have observed that each component is independent. If one of the bulbs is not working, the other bulbs will continue to glow. Now let's conduct an experiment on the series circuit. Take a connecting wire. Connect one end to the switch. The switch off and connect the other end of the wire to one of the terminals of light bulb A. Take another connecting wire and connect its one end to the terminal of the light bulb A and the other end to the terminal of light bulb B. Take one more connecting wire and connect its one end to the other terminal of the light bulb B and the other end to the light bulb C. Then take another connecting wire and connect its one end to the other end of light bulb C and the other end of the wire to one of the terminals of the battery. Take one more connecting wire and connect one end of the terminal end of the switch and the other end of the terminal end of the battery. Now turn on the switch and your circuit is complete. All the bulbs will glow. Now take out one of the bulbs from the circuit and the whole circuit will become open, so all the bulbs will turn off. Therefore in the case of a series circuit, we have observed that if one component fails, the circuit is incomplete. The current cannot flow through the circuit and as a result none of the electrical components will work. So friends, we have learned a lot about the series and parallel circuit, the advantages and disadvantages of both the series and parallel circuits. I hope that you have learned it all by heart.